Intermittent fasting, as we all know, is the rage these days. IF is not only merely a way to lose weight, but also beneficial for the overall general health of the body and mind. Dr. Jason Fung, a world-renowned nephrologist, is one of the most vocal advocates of intermittent fasting. We all have some pressing questions regarding intermittent fasting. Here are some of his answers. Can you drink bone broth while you're fasting? Yes, I highly recommend bone broth. It contains numerous minerals and vitamins and is quite filling in terms of reducing hunger pangs. The other benefit is that you can add a good amount of sea salt to it. The other fluids taken during a fast, water, tea, coffee, don't have sodium and you can become dehydrated. Mild dehydration, for example, may lead to cramps and headaches during longer fasting. While fasting, is it okay to drink coffee with milk? Technically, the milk doesn't fall within the guidelines of a true fast, but 1 to 2 teaspoons of milk cream added to coffee can improve compliance for some people, but no sweeteners or sugar. When an intermittent fast is complete, say after 16 to 20 hours, does one then consume that day's entire allocated macros for dinner? I don't recommend counting calories after the fast, I would try to eat as normally as possible. That would be your usual dinner, but perhaps a slightly larger portion of it. Remember that protein intake on a fasting day will be much lower than normal. On your eating day, you can simply make up for it by taking a higher dose. I've recently read that ketogenic diets can lead to renal tubular acidosis. What's your opinion on this? I would not be concerned. As a nephrologist, I'm referred all cases of RTA and I've perhaps seen only 3 or 4 cases in the last 15 years, all of which were not related to diet. RTA would be amongst the very lowest of my concerns with a ketogenic diet. Who can't use intermittent fasting? Certainly not children or teenagers. I don't advise fasting during pregnancy or breastfeeding. There is a concern of nutrient deficiency which I think far outweighs any potential benefit. Are there significant differences in benefits from 24-hour fasting versus multi-day fasting versus 16 ratio 8 fasting? The main difference, as you may suspect, is that shorter fasting periods are easier to do but are likely less effective for weight loss, and they can be done more frequently. So a 16 ratio 8 fast is often done daily, whereas a 24 fasting period is done much less often. For more severe insulin resistance, I tend to prescribe longer fasting periods, whereas for maintenance, I tend to prescribe shorter ones. The right duration and frequency depend on your health status and your health goals.